That's it, guys. It's time for another Clutch Files video. Clutch Files! I don't know. Is that our real intro? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Reach Out Reptile. This is another Clutch Files video for hashtag CL23029. And let me tell you, this clutch is a hog. So if you haven't heard of the orange ghost stripe, you've been living under a rock. This is one of the most exciting recessive genetic mutations in reticulated pythons, in my humble opinion. It makes all kinds of cool stuff. It's the harder to get side of making the cow reticulated python. It makes some of the deepest, richest orange colors. It's kind of like a half-tone lightning, less than a half-tone lightning mutation. So it works really, really well with any of your dark projects, stuff like the Golden Child. So the intention of this project, which was actually hatched over at my buddy Don Munson's house, or as I like to call him, Nick Fury. If you've ever visited Don's house, you know what I'm talking about. Having such a cool genetic mutation and figuring out how do we make it as absolutely tiny as we can. So some of these extreme, almost artificial looking color and pattern combinations that come out of the Orange Ghost Stripe project can be in as manageable a size as possible. And let me tell you, even in this kind of first generation visual Super Dwarf Orange Ghost Stripe, we got it. So this project all comes from one group of animals that was bred to really just do this project justice, do it the right way as best as possible from the beginning. The sire of this clutch was a visual golden child orange ghost stripe. The dam of the clutch was a 100% het orange ghost stripe or hogs as we like to call them. The animals that we're using are owned by either Don or myself in these Orange Ghost Stripe projects, but they didn't actually come from us. While Don did produce the sire, the parents of the sire were actually produced by Sal Valeta and Nick Glauner over at Sal Daddy Retix. They had gotten one of the very first Golden Child Orange Ghost Stripes produced over there by Nerd. Those early generation animals were already pretty small growing, even though they didn't have any like Kalatoa blood in them or anything like that. They decided to take their cutting edge male and run it to a Kalatoa female, which they thought was Annery based on her looks. Beautiful silver animal, it's a Kalatoa, it's probably Annery, right? So those original animals were definitely golden child and you know wild type pattern that are 100% head OGS and rolling a dice on the het Annery as well. Personally, every time we stop and talk about Annery's, I have to go on a little like rabbit hole thing. I love Annery's. And because it takes like the orange and reds out, what better combo than something like a golden child orange ghost stripe, which are literally like pumpkin orange animals as adults to start with, am I right? That would like the negative of that orange animal from like speaking from like a photography analogy standpoint would be so cool and I would love to see it. But we gotta back all that up because in these clutches, no anneries came out with any possible combination. So I don't even think the mom was a head annery going back to the Kalatoa that they used, which is a bummer, but I have my own anneries and we'll get into that later. What was awesome was the sizes that were achieved even in that first generation crossing using a smaller mainland male to the uh, Kalatoa female. It shrunk them down dramatically. It was awesome to see these tiny females producing brilliant morph retics in sizes that are like ball python. Okay, so those were the sire's parents, right? You go from the original GCOGS at Nerd, Sal Daddy throws out some awesome 50% super dwarf animals that are super, super tiny, and then breeding those hets together produced the first 50% super dwarf GCOGS and OGS. These have only been made for a couple of years now, so it's super exciting to see. So the dam, guys, look at this picture of the dam sitting on her eggs. She's so cute, she's so tiny, and she's one of those originals. First of all, the head orange ghost stripe in its own, or again, hogs, uh, they are beautiful. I really don't know why anyone said that this was like a recessive, except that the head orange ghost stripes are I guess like a little bit more subtle than something like a phantom, but they're honestly no less subtle than something like a platinum, which also makes white snakes. So 
Anyway, they're incredible. The deep oranges within the brown background, the cool speckling, a little bit of striping sometimes to the pattern. It really turns out well. A lot of times they have really bright red orange eyes and they look so amazing when you breed them into stuff like sunfires, tigers, platinums, anything that makes them a little bit lighter and brighter. It's really cool to see. And I don't know why this works, but the Golden Child, the GC head OGSs, actually get darker with that OGS. So it cleans that the already reduced speckling pattern of a Golden Child that goes down the back and it cleans it up to, to where you have less blotchiness in there and it's just kind of a, a, a very evenly distributed speckles going down the back. And again, with that rich brown base, but it just deepens down with the, the Golden Child already kind of, you know, adding that hyper melanism that it does on top of those rich reddy oranges makes for some animals that um, some of these GC head OGSs grow up to be black. It's pretty stinking cool. And those are just the heads. Wait until you see the visuals. The visual orange ghost stripe, as I said before, is probably one of the prettiest looking retics in my personal opinion. They're like the sunset ball python that everyone hoped the sunset would actually be. Am I right? Rich, beautiful oranges throughout. They get brighter with age. A lot of times they have this vivid yellow dorsal pattern going down and they mix into everything, whether a head or a visual. So even though it's, you know, mostly affects the color, it's definitely a pattern mutation as well. And this is kind of weird to think about, but Orange Ghost Stripe, it's a cool name for the morph. I mean, Kevin got to name that. He was the one that originated the morph. But actually, as we found out later with the cow projects and breeding into the blue-eyed Lucy's or Super Phantoms, the Orange Ghost Stripe is actually a form of blue-eyed leukistic animal. It's just so dark and so dirty that it leaves all this stuff there, which I love from like a selective breeding standpoint or a combination standpoint, because you can add all these things in there and they really look incredible. Like a golden child orange ghost stripe versus a visual orange ghost stripe are night and day difference. But if you were to have a golden child super phantom versus just a regular super phantom, you wouldn't even be able to tell. It's always cool with a clutch like this, guys, when you're breeding like multiple different genetics to see all the combinations. How cool is it to get four distinct visual appearances within what one clutch? Everything from an animal that's gonna grow up to be almost black to an animal that's technically a dirty blue eye Lucy. This might be one of the most promising mutations being recessive, being spectacular, and having so much flexibility, you know, with being able to breed it into cows or some of the crazy selective breeding that we've seen in the mainland side of retics with the orange ghost stripe of any super dwarf project, especially because with this particular bloodline, the adults are so dramatically small. It's almost like you're done selective breeding for sizes except of course we're not. So some of the cool things that you could do with these babies is to run it into some cool pattern mutations. I would love to see it in things like anthrax or something crazy and dark like that, or maybe some color combinations, or like we've just seen for the very first time from SC Constrictors, the, the orange glow, orange ghost stripe stuff. Those things are going to be insane. My personal direction I wanna do is push it even further into the Superdorf and add back in that aneurythristic so that I can see what that negative color version of this particular project looks like. I'm so curious, I wanna see it done. And if there's anything better than a really tiny super dwarf that makes spectacular animals like orange ghost stripes and cows, the only thing that could make that even better is if it was like, had even more super dwarf influence in it. So even though this was a, a relatively small clutch numbers wise, everything in this clutch I'm absolutely in love with. Plus we have all the other stuff that you could breed them into if you wanted some different diversity. Right, Thomas? Oh, are we even gonna do those ones? Those ones haven't been published. Well, this is Clutch 29. So Clutch 27, guys, is actually the same bloodline, orange ghost stripe and head orange ghost stripe from the 50% Kalatoas. If you wanted to actually buy one of these Clutch 29 animals, you could go grab a hashtag CL23027 and have a little bit more genetic diversity. Or we kind of didn't even tell you about Hashtag CL23008, which was a breeding between my orange ghost stripe male and GI Joe's super high percentage, 87.5% Kalatoa annery. 
Really excited about that. That makes some of the highest, no, not some of, the highest percentage Superdorf head orange ghost stripes ever made. Lots of cool Superdorf influence on the pattern already. And it's basically taking this Clutch 29 to the next generation, making it, again, higher percentage, but also now this time 100% head orange ghost stripe and anery to see what that brings us in the future. Pretty exciting stuff. I don't know if I was supposed to tell you about those ones or not, but there you go, three for one in this video. A lot of you guys do know who he is and all about these bloodlines and all the projects that we've been doing because you're on our Patreon group. So huge shout out to our Patreon for allowing all this stuff to happen, following us along on the journey, generation through generation, and seeing those new versions of babies as they hatch. We love you guys and it was so cool having you guys out here just a little while ago at Retic Fest so that we could fondle all of these little babies. It's awesome. Thank you.